All right, we're in our final section on our macromolecules and enzymes unit. Um, it actually takes us to a, a portion of chapter 32 in your textbook, which deals with the digestive system. So in learning target five, um, students will be able to explain how enzymes break down macromolecules throughout the digestive system. So now we're gonna apply what we've learned about um, enzymes, about our different macromolecules, and how your digestive system actually contains some of those specific enzymes that will break down some specific uh, macromolecules throughout your body. Now before we get into that, um, we can actually break down digestion into two parts, what we call mechanical um, digestion, uh, where it just physically breaks down your food into smaller pieces, okay? Um, that's, that's the act of chewing. You know, when you chew your food, I know some of you, if you're like my brothers, inhale your food, but <laughs> uh, when you chew your food, what you're basically doing is breaking it down into smaller parts, and that provides a greater surface area for those chemical reactions to take place, for those enzymes to take um, do their job. Chemical digestion is what we're going to focus on more, and that's using enzymes. Remember, they speed up chemical reactions, and the three main areas we're going to focus on where your digestion takes place is your mouth, your stomach, and most of it occurs in your small intestine. All right? So let's start with the mouth first. Again, remember, you chew your food. It gets moistened with saliva. Um, but the enzyme that occur, that is used here is what's known as salivary amylase. We already talked about this briefly in the last PowerPoint. Salivary amylase is going to break down your carbohydrates into monosaccharides. Okay, and remember, this is occurring in your mouth. Um, from there, your um, food gets pushed through your, you know, you swallow, it goes through your esophagus. Well, it doesn't just drop like a rock if you were to just drop <laughs> a rock off a cliff. It, your esophagus will squeeze and contract, squeeze and contract, squeeze and contract to kind of move that food down into your stomach. Um, when we think of some of the different carbohydrates you might eat during the day, anything that contains a lot of starch, so any of your breads, pastas, rice, potatoes, anything like that. Also a lot of your various fruits and stuff. Uh, remember that contains um, a lot of um, sugars in it as well. Uh, your stomach then, and once your food reaches the stomach, and your food gets churned out, obviously, and it's getting mixed and mushed up even more, um, and it turns into a, a kind of a messy substance called chyme. And it's going to get mixed with digestive um, fluids. Okay, the enzyme here is pepsin, or also protease. We use that term sometimes. And that's going to break proteins into amino acids. All right? So just think of the P in pepsin breaks down the P in proteins here um, into amino acids. Now, the interesting thing, remember we said that uh, most enzymes like a neutral pH, and in this case, it, um, it has a uh, very acidic, you know, you have hydrochloric acid in your stomach, and that actually activates the pepsin. So it's very acidic in your stomach, but pepsin is able to utilize that just fine and, and, and be in that environment just fine and work to break down those proteins. But the biggest place where most digestion occurs is your small intestine, okay? We have three main groups of, of enzymes that we're going to focus on that are utilized here. One of them is amylase, and it's going to, again, break down carbohydrates into monosaccharides, just like the salivary amylase did in your mouth. And then lipase is going to break down lipids, uh, specifically if we talk about fats, into fatty acids and glycerol. And it also has protease, which is going to break down proteins into amino acids. All right? Once it does that, most of your nutrients are going to be absorbed here. In the lining of your small intestine, you have these little finger-like projections called villi, which increases the surface area of those um, food molecules now. These 
monosaccharides, what they've been broken down into, their subunits. The monosaccharides, the fatty acids and glycerol and the amino acids get absorbed across that lining into your bloodstream where they can then be transported to your cells uh, to help with repair, to give you energy. Remember all those functions of your macromolecules? They provide all of that when they're broken down into those basic subunits. And once they're broken down into the subunits, remember through a hydrolysis reaction, then those subunits will then be used to build up and make larger molecules.